Hello, you find your internet folks. We're here at Super Premium 2025 at the Cornelis Networks booth. So with me, I have Lisa Spillman, CEO of Cornelis. Would you like to tell us about what Cornelis is and what you guys do? I would love to. So thanks for having me. I, it's always good. The only thing we're missing is some cheese. We got lots of <laughs> got lots of There was cheese last us. night. Oh, man. Okay. Well, yeah, we were here at the, the kickoff last night. It was a fun opening. Uh, so Cornelis Networks is a company that is laser focused on delivering the highest performance networking solutions mm -hmm. for the highest performance applications in your data center. So that's your HPC workloads, your AI workloads, and everything that just has intense data demands and benefits a lot from a parallel processing type of use case. So that's where all of our architecture, all of our differentiation, all of our work goes into. Awesome. So, Cornelis Networks uh, has their own networking yes. called OmniPath. Yes. Now, some of you may know, OmniPath used to be an Intel technology, yes. but Cornelis, I believe, bought the IP yep. um, from Intel. So could you go into a little bit about what OmniPath is yep. and the difference between OmniPath, uh, Ethernet, and uh, InfiniBand? Okay, yes, we can do that. So. You're right, Cornelis uh, spun out of Intel mm -hmm. with an OmniPath architecture. Okay. And so this OmniPath architecture, I should maybe uh, share too, that we're a full stack, full solution uh, company. So we design both a NIC, a super NIC ASIC, we design a switch ASIC. Look at you, have, he's, he's so good, he's ready I, to go. I have, I have, yes, I you have, have uh, showcases. Have okay. So we have we design our, our Super NIC ASIC, we design our Switch ASIC, we design the card for the adding card for the Super NIC and the, the switch board all the way up, for, you know, top of rack as well mm -hmm. as all the way up to a big old director class uh, mm -hmm. system that we have sitting here. All of that is based on our OmniPath architecture, which was incubated and built at Intel then, like you said, spun out and acquired by Cornelis. So the foundational element of the OmniPath architecture is this lossless and congestion-free design. So it was built you know, in the last decade focused on how do you take all of the data movement happening mm -hmm. in highly parallel workloads and bring together a congestion-free environment that does not lose packets. So it was specifically built to address these modern workloads, the growth of AI, mm -hmm. the massive scale of data being put together while letting go of learning from the past, but letting go of, of legacy other networks that maybe design more for storage systems or right. for, you know, just other use cases. That's not what they were sort of really designed for. The internet, yeah, such as yeah, Ethernet. So, like, a, a more modern um, development. I mean, Ethernet, I mean, amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But it's 50 years old now. So what we did was in this, in this architecture, built in some really advanced capabilities and features like your credit-based flow controls mm -hmm. and your dynamic lane scaling. So it's, it's the performance as well as adding reliability to the system. Mm -hmm. And so the network plays a huge role in not only increasing your compute utilization of your GPU mm -hmm. or your CPU, but it also can play a really big role in increasing the uptime of your overall system, which has yes. huge Incredibly economic important. value. Yep. Yes. So that's the, that's the OmniPath architecture and the way that it comes to life and the way that people experience it is lowest latency in the industry on uh, all of these workloads. You know, we major on micro benchmarks like ping pong latency, all, uh -huh. the, all the good micros. And then the highest message rates in the industry, two and a half X higher than the closest competitor. So that works really great for those, you know, message dependent, really uh, fast rate workloads. And then on top of that, we're all gonna operate at the same bandwidth. I mean, bandwidth's not really a differentiator anymore. And so we measure ourselves on how fast we get to have mm -hmm. bandwidth and how quickly we can launch and start the data movement, the packet movement. So fastest to half bandwidth is one of our points of pride for the architecture as well. So speaking of uh, sort of ethernet, I know uh, there's been the new uh, Ultra Ethernet yes. Consortium in order to update ethernet to a more, to, to the standard of today. Yeah. What has Cornelis done to uh, support that in, yes. and especially with some of your technologies? So we think this move to Ultra Ethernet is really exciting for the mm. industry. And, and it was obviously time. I mean, you know, it takes a big need and requirement to get mm -hmm. this many companies to work yeah. together and kind of put aside some differences yeah. and, and come together to come up with a consortium. And 
a capability, a definition that actually does serve the workloads of today. Okay. So we're, we're very um, excited and motivated towards it. And the reason uh, that we are so is because we see so much of what we've already built in Omnipath being reflected mm -hmm. through in the requirements of Ultra Ethernet. We also have a, a little bit of a point of pride in that the, the software standard for mm -hmm. uh, Ultra Ethernet is built on top of Lib Fabric, which is an open source, uh, uh -huh. it, you know, that, yep. that we developed actually, yes. yep. and, and we're maintainers of. So we're we're all in on the Ultra Ethernet, and in fact, uh, we just announced our next generation of products. Yes. That, yeah. So speaking of the yes. CN6000, the yes, successor to this, the yes. CN5000. Yep. What exactly does it support in yep. terms of? Uh, networking uh, protocols and what do you s sort of see in terms of like industry uptake? Yes. So this is really uh, cool. We think then it's going to be super valuable for our customers. So with our next generation, our CN6000, that's our 800 gig product. Mm -hmm. That one is going to be a multi-protocol NIC. So our okay. super NIC there, it will have Omnipath native in it. And we have you know customers that they absolutely want that highest performance that they can get through Omnipath and it works great for them. But we're also adding into it Rocky V2. Okay. So Ethernet performance as well as Ultra Ethernet, the 1.0, yep. uh, you know, the, the spec, the uh, Ethernet, Ultra Ethernet compliance as well. So you're gonna get this multimodal NIC. And what we what we're doing, what our differentiation is is that you're you're moving to that Ethernet transport layer, but you're still behind the scenes getting the benefits of the Omnipath architecture. Okay. So it's not like it's two totally separate things. We're actually going to take your packet, run it through the, the Omnipath pipes and that architecture benefit, but spit it out as Ethernet as a protocol or the transport layer. Cool. Yeah. And for Ultra Ethernet, I know that yes. there's sort of two sort of um, specs. There's what's sort of colloquially known as the AI spec yeah. and the HPC spec, which have different requirements. Uh, for the CN6000, will it be sort of the AI spec or the HPC spec? Yeah, so we're focusing on making sure the Ultra Ethernet transport layer absolutely works, but mm -hmm. we are absolutely intending to deliver to both HPC performance mm -hmm. and AI workload performance. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like to kind of um, point out is it's, it's not that they're so different. I, uh, AI workloads and HPC workloads have a lot of similar demands on the network. Mm -hmm. They just pull on them in different ways. Yeah. So it's like um, message rate, for example. Um, message rate is hugely important in things like computational fluid dynamics. Absolutely. But it also plays a role in inference. Now, mm. it might be the top determiner of performance in a, a CFD application, and it might be the third or fourth in an AI mm -hmm. application. So you need that same, you know, uh, the latency, the message rates, the bandwidth, the overlap, mm -hmm. the communications, you know, all that uh, uh, type of stuff. Just workloads pull on them a little differently. So we've built a well-rounded solution that addresses all, and then by customer use case, you can pull on what you need. Awesome, and as you can see here, uh, you guys make your own switches. We do. But, and you make your own next. Yep. But one of the questions I have is, can you use the CN6000 NIC with any switch? Yes. Okay, so that's a, a great point. And yes, you can. So one mm -hmm. of our big focuses as we expand the, the company, the customer base, and serve more customers and workloads is becoming much more broadly industry interoperable. Okay. And so we think this is important for um, larger scale customers that want to maybe run multi-vendor environments. Mm -hmm. So we're already doing work on the 800 gig to ensure that it works across a variety of, in, you know, just standard industry available switches. And that gives customers a lot of flexibility. Of course, they can still choose to use both the SuperNIC yep. and the switch from us. And that's great. We love that. Yep. But we know that there's going to be times when there's a, like a partner or a use case where having our NIC paired with someone else's switch is the right move. And, and we fully support it. So then I guess sort of the, the flip side of that is if I have, say, uh, another NIC, could I attach that to, a, to an Omnipath switch? You will be able to, not okay. in the CN6000, but that, okay. stay tuned. I'll have more, more breaking news. That's just a little sneak peek of, uh, of the future future. Well, 
and sort of to round this off with the most important question, yeah. what's your favorite type of cheese, Lisa? Okay, um, I am from Portland, Oregon. And Ooh, so I have okay. to go with our local, to the state of Oregon, our Rogue Creamery Blues. Okay. I had a chance this summer to go down to Grants Pass, where they're they're from and headquartered, and we did the the whole cheese factory er, factory tour. I thought of you, we literally got <laughs> We got to meet the cows, so nice. it was it was very nice. But there, it was very cool, and so mm -hmm. that's what I have to go in. One of my favorite cheeses is Tillamook. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So, so another local favorite. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. thank you so much for this interview. Yeah. If you guys like stuff like this, hit like, hit subscribe. Apparently, there's a new hype feature on YouTube. Uh, apparently, it helps a lot. Or I, I don't know. But um, yeah, there will be a transcript of this interview at chipsandcheese.com, as well as links to the PayPal and Patreon if you'd like to donate. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Yep. Have a good one, folks. Yeah.